Listen, Jake, you got nothing to worry about. As soon as Nona opens her mouth, the judge will know she's nuts. Well, I tell you, the only thing I know is that she almost drove me nuts, man. Calling me a gigolo. Accusing me of making with Alan Sparks on the hood of a Mercedes Benz. Telling me that screaming that I was only after a car. I'll tell you another day like that, and I would have been in a straitjacket. This is Divorce Court, presided over by Judge William Keene. In the case we'll be seeing today, Nona Potts is suing Jake Potts, her husband of three years, for divorce on the grounds of adultery and mental cruelty. Mr. Potts is counter-suing on the same grounds. I'll hear this case of Potts versus Potts now. Mr. Marshall, are you going to make an opening statement? Yes, I will, Your Honor. Thank you. Jake Potts is a scoundrel who wooed his wife not because he loved her, but because she could finance his schemes. Evidence will prove that he had an affair with a younger woman, he conned his wife out of her prized gull-wing Mercedes, and then he abandoned her. We seek a divorce on the grounds of mental cruelty, adultery, and abandonment, Your Honor. We seek the Mercedes worth $225,000, and we ask that no spousal support be given. Thank you. Ms. Norton, are you also going to make an opening statement? Yes, I am, Your Honor. Jake Potts always loved his wife and still does. But she has destroyed this marriage with her incessant jealousy. She is several years older than my client, and it is this age discrepancy which causes her insecurity. She has ceased to become a wife, Your Honor. Instead, she's become a jailer. Finally, in an attempt to regain her youth, she has engaged in sordid one-night stands. And, Your Honor, Mr. Potts never conned his wife out of that car. It was a gift. We seek this divorce on grounds of metal cruelty and adultery. We ask for the car, valued at $225,000, and half of the bank account worth $29,000. Thank you. Call your first witness. Thank you, Your Honor. Call Nona Potts. Mrs. Potts, step forward. About to take the stand is Nona Potts, the plaintiff in today's case. This is her second marriage. She's been accused by her husband of being pathologically jealous. Both the plaintiff and the defendants are seeking possession of a rare gullwing Mercedes automobile. Her testimony will begin shortly. All right, let me hear from Mrs. Potts. Thank you, Your Honor. Mrs. Potts, would you tell us the link between the Mercedes and your marriage? We both bid on the car uh, at a, a car auction. Well, I was after the car of my dreams. Jake dropped out at 125000 and I got it for 150000 And I got Jake. When did the problems in your marriage begin? It was about two years ago that he suddenly announced that he felt trapped in the marriage. Well, I was a bit surprised at first, but then I began to notice that he was paying attention to young women. And then he almost cracked the car up, rubbernecking a young thing in a spandex mini skirt. He also began to pay lots of attention to my best friend Heidi's daughter, Ellen. Well, I... I couldn't take that anymore, so I insisted on a trial separation. And did he agree to that? Yes. I thought that if I gave Jake the space he wanted, he would want me back again. So I, I moved in with my best friend Heidi temporarily. And did Jake come back? For three months, not a word from him, no calls. He wouldn't even answer mine. And then suddenly he started coming around again. Oh, you know, presents, flowers. Oh, he was very attentive. He even got down on his knees and asked if we could repeat the marriage ceremony to uh, reestablish our vows. Well, so I moved back home. Well, did you do anything to show that you trusted him then? Well, I talked this over with my friend Heidi and her daughter Ellen. Uh, Ellen suggested that I give Jake the Mercedes. Well, I was so in love with him, I did it. As soon as he got the pink slip, the Great Wall of China went up, and I suddenly ceased to exist. Did you talk to Jake about his sudden change? <laughs> he laughed and said we'd discuss it later, that he had a date. So I called Heidi. Well, she sounded rather upset and said that I should go to Ellen's house and that I would understand. And did you go over there? Yes, I did. I saw the Mercedes parked in her driveway. I, oh, and yes, there were a pair of panties draped over the gear shift. 
I peeked in through the, her bedroom window and I saw Jake and Ellen in bed together. Well, I, I got so angry that I threw a rock through the window and Jake came out swearing, dressed in Ellen's robe, carrying a baseball bat. Of course, he shut up pretty fast when he saw it was me. Thank you. No further questions. Cross-examination. Thank you, Your Honor. Mrs. Potts, didn't your husband tell you that the man in Ellen Sparks' bed was in fact her boyfriend? Yes. Her boyfriend and my husband happened to be the same person. Oh, isn't this just another example of the jealousy that finally drove your husband away from you? My jealousy was well-founded. Didn't you equip Jake with a car phone and a beeper so that you could better keep track of him 24 hours a day? I gave him that stuff because he said he needed it for business. For business? Yes, for business, which is what he told me. Your Honor, these phone bills have already been marked and entered as defendants A through D. Now, Mrs. Potts, if this was just for business, then how do you explain calling him nine to ten times a day except to keep track of him? I like talking to him, and uh, Jake is quite a talker. You also like to control him financially, didn't you? <laughs> control Jake financially? I've had household pets who were more capable of making money than he was. Oh, really? And how do you do explain discouraging him from taking the last five jobs that he was offered during the course of your marriage? Because I was encouraging him to be an entrepreneur, which is what he said he wanted. And after you took away his manhood financially and then destroyed this marriage with your jealousy, didn't you also threaten to kill yourself if your husband left you? For that dreck. What is a dreck, Mrs. Potts? That's Yiddish, Your Honor, for human garbage. Like him. Listen, if there's any human like garbage him. around here, it's you, Mr. lady. Mr. Potts, oh. I did not ask you any questions. Ask your next question. I have nothing further of this witness. Let me see counsel bench, please. Mrs. Potts, you may step down. While Judge Keene confers with the attorneys, we have time for a short break. <laughs> We return now to divorce court, about to testify for Nona Potts as her best friend, Heidi Sparks. I do. All right, Ms. Marshall, let me hear from this witness. Thank you, Your Honor. Mrs. Sparks, uh, when Nona Potts was living with you, did her husband ever try to reconcile with her? He was like a dog after a pants cuff. Even I believed that shyster gigolo was telling the truth. And uh, I told Nona, like a jerk, to go back with him. She worshipped the ground under his lying feet. Nona's getting back with that piece of dreck should be in the Guinness Book of Records for worst mistake for a woman over 60. Do you know it was a mistake? Oh, yes. A few days before Nona caught Jake with Ellen, uh, her kids spent the night with me. Now, Carrie, who's four, couldn't fall asleep without her uh, stuffed giraffe. Ellen's house is only a few blocks away, so I went over there for it. There was nobody in the house, so I checked out the garage. And what did you find? My own daughter and that dirty old man putting the shine of a lifetime on the hood of that Mercedes. They were waxing in the buff, if you catch my drift. Thank you. No further questions. Cross-examination. Thank you, Your Honor. Mrs. Sparks, isn't it a fact that you've resented Ellen ever since your husband left his estate to her? Oh, I didn't expect a dime from that no good Nick. And weren't Jake Potts and your daughter Ellen fully dressed when you walked in on them allegedly making love? I caught them just in time. And aren't you here testifying today only to get back at your daughter? My husband, Miss Norton, was a prince, the prince of darkness. That's all I got to say about him. As for Ellen, I'm happy that she got the money because she's got rotten choice in men. I have no further questions. All right, you may step down. Mr. Marshall, is there anything further from the plaintiff? Uh, no, Your Honor, the plaintiff rests. Miss Norton, call your first witness. Your Honor, I called Jake Potts to the step stand. Step forward. The defendant, Jake Potts, has just been called to the stand. He's been accused of having an affair with the daughter of his wife's best friend. He'll also answer charges that he reconciled only to get possession of a rare gullwing Mercedes. I do. All right, let me hear from the defendant. Thank you, Your Honor. Jake, what happened to your marriage? Well, Nona hit 65 like she was doing 160. He slammed into a wall. Talk about a crash. From that time on, she was nuts thinking that I was on the prowl for a younger woman. And when I was in the office, I used to get these uh, calls, you know, frantic calls for help, almost on the hour. And one time I went home, and I found her looking for a, a mismatched sock. Did her behavior affect your work? Oh, did it ever. I told her I had a business meeting in the office there, and she begged me not to go. I mean, she got down on her hands and knees and begged me. And I said, I have to go. 
Well, she says, she wrapped her le arms around my legs and what? Well, finally, I, I got away. And she shows up at the office, breaks into the meeting with a camera. <laughs> I don't know what she expected to find. Jake, did you reconcile with your wife as she claims? Well, not really. You know, I, I love Nona, and I was hoping that she would pull herself together, get some help, something, you know. But she said that she had to move in with me because her girlfriend, Heidi, was getting married again. No, I couldn't leave her out in the streets, could I? You're lying. He only wanted the car. Met Mrs. Potts. I've heard from you. Now let me hear from your husband. Please. Go ahead. And, Jake, did you continue a sexual relation with your wife after the uh, separation ended? Just once. And that was a mistake. Because she thought it to mean that we were back together again. Even though I told her a hundred times, hey, just because we're making love doesn't mean we're reconciled. She told me that if I don't make love to her, she'll find somebody who would. And did she? Well, a couple of days later, I got this telephone call. It's four o'clock in the morning. And she's at one of these uh, uh, adult motels. Did you pick her up, Jake? No, I rushed down there as fast as I could. Well, she was polluted, hysterical, and she's standing there holding this blonde wig in her hand. And, well, she had picked up this uh, computer salesman, 20 years younger, and uh, uh, he freaked and left when he was rubbing her head and his blonde wig came off in his hand. <laughs> I mean, I, I love Nona, but I, I couldn't take it anymore. So, uh, you know, I, I just, uh, you know, I mean, Nona's too down on herself to have a husband. What she needs, really, is a really good shrink, you know. Thank you, Jake. I have no further questions. Cross-examination. Thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Potts, not counting your present wife, um, how many times have you been married? Six times. And isn't it true, uh, except for your first wife, that all of these women have been wealthier than you? Well, who knew? I mean, love is blind, right? <laughs> Mr. Potts, uh, in the last 20 years, have you ever held down a job? Uh, not per se. I'm an entrepreneur. I see. And just prior to getting the car back from your wife, didn't you put up $25,000 to buy some oil, a quarter of a million dollars worth of oil lease options? Well, yes, I, um, I figured with the way things are heating up in the Persian Gulf, well, it was a very good investment. Uh, perhaps. But isn't it also true that if you failed to exercise those options when they came due, you'd be out that $25,000 investment? Yes, that's the way it worked. Isn't it also true that 24 hours after you got the car back, you put it up as collateral for a bank loan to cover those oil lease options? Yes, yeah. Well, I, I, I could have gotten a loan anyway. I mean, the, the, the car just made it easier. Isn't the real truth here, Mr. Potts, that you engineered this so-called reconciliation to save your financial behind? Listen, I was a damn saint with that woman. That woman sucked every blood I have, every drop of blood I had. That woman is an is a, is a energy vampire. I have no further questions of this person, Your Honor. Mr. Potts, you may step down. As Mr. Potts leaves the stand, we have time for a short break. We return now to divorce court. About to testify for Jake Potts is his business partner, Conrad Golden. I do. All right, let me hear from this witness. Thank you, Your Honor. Conrad, how would you describe Jake Potts' relationship with his wife? Like Jake said, he was a saint with her. She was a pain in the keister with her whining and complaining. One time we were about an hour late coming home from a ball game. There was a big accident on the freeway. About a mile from Jake's house, the cops pull us over. They say Nona reported him missing. She's a nut. And isn't it true that it is you and not Jake Potts who was Ellen Sparks' boyfriend? Yes. In fact, I was there the night Nona broke the window with the rock. It wasn't Jake in bed with Ellen, it was me. Well, Conrad, why didn't you clear up this misunderstanding at the time? I was in the middle of a divorce myself, and it would have looked bad if I got caught with Ellen. But then I found out my wife had a boyfriend, so we split things 50-50. That's the way it should be. None of this nonsense in court. Thank you, sir. I have no further questions. Cross-examination. Thank you, Your Honor. Mr. Goldwyn, let's play uh, 20 questions. What's Ellen Sparks' phone number? 555-1779. Wrong. It's 555-2388. Now, what's her birthday? May 20th. 
Close, but no cigar. It's November 15th. How about the ages of her children? Willie's six, and little one's three. Strike three. They're eight and four. Now, isn't it true you're lying about your relationship with Ellen Sparks in order to cover up your financial relationship with Jake Potts? Oh, no. So what? I'm just not an attentive type guy. My ex-wife used to complain about it all the time. Wasn't your name on those oil lease options as well as Jake's? Yeah, so what? Well, uh, so if Jake didn't get the gullwing Mercedes for, to use as collateral, you would have had to put up the money and you'd be out the money yourself, wouldn't you? Yes, but we got the loan. Your Honor, I'd like this copy of Eurocar magazine marked as plaintiff's one. May I approach a witness? It'll be so marked, and you may. You'll notice that this copy of Eurocar magazine is dated August 1st. Now, that's a good two months after you got collateral for the loan. Call your attention to the ad for a red gullwing Mercedes. Now, would you read for the court the telephone number on that ad? 555-2388. Hey, that's the number you just said was Ellen's. I don't get it. Why is he using her number? Did you know he was selling the car? No, I didn't. But I do know what's going on. Well, perhaps you'd uh, let the court in on your enlightenment. Shut up, Conrad. He's only trying to rattle your chain. Mr. Potts, keep quiet. Answer the question. If he sells the car and disappears with the money, I'm left holding the bag with the oil leases. I have had it with you, Jake. Listen, I'm going to break your kneecaps. Mr. Mr. Yeah. Potts, I'm not going to warn you again. Have you finished your answer? Your Honor, I never touched Ellen Sparks. She hated my guts. It was Jake sleeping with her, and it was his plan all along to con the car from Nona. Any further? I have no further questions, Your Honor. Ms. Norton, do you have any questions of this witness? No, Your Honor. Let me see counsel in chambers, and you may step down. While Judge Keene confers with the attorneys in chambers, we have time for a break. Coming up on the next episode of Divorce Court. That man was a constant threat to me and my baby. Surrounded by mafia hitmen. You can't blame that woman for being depressed. She's a prisoner in her own home. I wish I knew where her fear comes from. What it is that makes her so afraid. Find out the truth. That's uh, Mrs. DiStefano there in the leather with the whip. On the next episode of Divorce Court. We return now to divorce court. The attorneys have completed their closing arguments, and Judge Keene is about to render his decision. Over the years, I've tried cases where the property dispute is a brass bed, parrot, a monkey, a dog, and now a gull wing Mercedes. While I was astounded by the value of this automobile, I have long ago ceased to marvel at what property disputes will bring uh, parties into divorce court. But the property dispute here is incidental to the underlying problems with this marriage, if indeed this can be called a marriage. I heard nothing during the three years about love, trust, consideration, or respect. This wasn't a marriage. This was a three-year con game. Mrs. and Mr. Potts have both pleaded adultery and mental cruelty, and four witnesses have come to the witness stand and addressed those issues. And let me put this as clearly as I possibly can as to the credibility of the witnesses. Mr. Potts, I didn't believe a word that you said. And until Mr. Golden realized that he was being conned, I didn't believe a word that he said either. I order a judgment of divorce in this case for Mrs. Potts on her complaint. Mr. Potts, you will forthwith return the gullwing Mercedes to its rightful owner. Mr. Potts, you will pay all attorney fees and court costs. And in order for you to do so, I will award you 10% of the balance of the marital estate and you will take nothing else from this marriage. You know, I learned a great Yiddish word today, drek, human garbage. I wonder if there's a gull wing drek, a gull wing drek in a plaid coat. This court stands in recess. Promotional consideration has been paid for and provided by the following suppliers. 
Which swab has 50% more cotton right at the tip? Q-Tips brand cotton swabs, because a swab by any other name just isn't the same. Discover a soft, as soft as ever there was, with new Ultra Soft Snuggle Fabric Softener. It's so much softer to the touch, kids can't bear to be without it. Now Lee has made the French manicure easy and affordable with Lee Press-On Nails, the French manicure. Now, fast relief for gas pain and bloating. Gas-X has the strongest, fastest doctor-recommended ingredient for fast relief. That's Gas-X. Divorce Court is a dramatization based on cases and issues raised in the family courts of this nation. None of the participants knows the outcome of the case before hearing Judge Keene's decision. The jurisdiction is a combination of laws of all 50 states, therefore the laws of your community may differ. The cases are presided over by Judge William Keene, who served on the Superior Court of California for 18 years.